Kayaking in winter can be quite dangerous. Kayaking in cold water conditions can actually be dangerous as well. Even if you're really experienced in paddling in winter or in cold conditions, if you're not properly prepared. Those who know me know that I love paddling in winter and uh, winter kayaking can be a great thing if done safely. But in this video I thought I'd focus on a number of things that one really needs to take into account to be safe out there. I'm the founder of a group on Facebook called Winter Kayaking, which right now has about 11,000 members or so. Lots of amazing stories shared out there uh, when it comes to kayaking in winter, fantastic landscapes, the peace of paddling to yourself or yourself and your buddies and experiencing nature in a different way. I'm going to go through a lot of tough stuff in this video. That doesn't mean that I think that winter kayaking is super dangerous or that people should be scared unnecessarily. It, it's not about that. It's about being responsible and knowing what you're getting into and preparing properly. And when preparing properly and gearing up properly, then you can have a great and safe experience, hopefully. Uh, not doing that being unprepared, going out with the wrong gear, not really considering the risks and just going out, you know, I, I'll handle it. It, it, this is fun and I never, I never capsize and I, I can handle cold water, no, no worries. That's a recipe for a really bad situation. So being prepared means a fun, enjoyable, hopefully really safe trip and that's something you should always take into account. Winter kayaking, of course, can be amazing. The winter might look different to you depending on where you are. You might have snow and ice, you might not. You might have warmer climates, but still cold water. In all cases, there are dangers to look out for. So in this video, I'm going to talk about paddling in winter conditions, meaning cold water and potentially with ice and snow. And uh, I'll focus maybe on the perspective of some who haven't paddled a lot in winter before. We see that a lot in the winter kayaking group, people coming in and trying out winter kayaking for the first time, or maybe they've only paddled a few times. And they, you know, it's hard to know what to expect if you haven't done it before. So the first thing to do is definitely learn from the experience of others. Those who have paddled in winter or in cold water conditions and know these dangers or things that might pop up it's really important that you actually share your experience as well because these are lessons that can't be learned in other seasons so I know that this question does come up a lot from paddlers who are new to winter conditions what to expect what to look out for what gear should I use etc so things to look out for when winter kayaking so first of all you need to dress for immersion meaning that you need to dress for the water temperature that you're going to be out paddling in. Not the air temperature. Something you take into account, you need to adapt to if it's warmer in the air. But the important thing is really if you end up in the water with an unexpected capsize. That is when it really matters. You need to be properly dressed. And uh, I've prepared a video previously on what clothing that I wear actually when winter kayaking. So I'll refer to that and just note that it's really important that you have proper protection, meaning a dry suit in winter normally, or perhaps a wetsuit in some conditions, to make sure that if you end up in that cold water, you're not subject to cold water shock with involuntary inhalation of water or suffering severe effects from the cold. Hypothermia is something serious and something that especially new paddlers in these conditions might not really fully expect or understand in terms of how dangerous that can be and how quickly. It might actually be a matter of seconds before you're in a life-threatening situation. But beyond that, there are a lot of other things that are specific to winter, risks that you need to gear up for and take into account. So beyond having the proper gear, proper clothing, proper protection, and also spare clothes always in dry bags so that you can dress warmly again in case you were to be immersed in the water involuntarily and you need a change of clothes. There are also other things to consider. Things you need to be aware of in the water. There might be ice in the water. 
you might have ice very visible to you you know ice that you can't cross uh, big areas filled with ice but you might also have floating ice in the water ice sheets floating in the water or chunks of ice floating in the water and that ice might not actually be visible to you so you might be out there paddling all of a sudden you hit that sudden block of ice under the water where you thought it was just a small piece of ice maybe visible over the surface but under the surface that was something more something like that could make you lose your balance and tip over or ending up on top of an ice sheet and suddenly realize that your kayak which might be a bit v-shaped might not be that easy to balance up on that ice sheet and often that's how people lose their balance when actually ending up on the ice so one thing that's really important in case you were to fall into the water and need to get up onto ice actually is to carry ice picks when you're paddling so that you're able to get a grip on the ice in case you're not able to easily get up onto your kayak you might even have your kayak with you but there might not even be space enough for a proper rescue there might not be space to kick off with your legs etc so carry those ice picks when you think that there might be ice and when it comes to ice we also need to consider that there could be underwater current. One thing that happened to a friend of mine in Finland uh, was that he was actually pulled under a dock due to the current driving the water under the dock. And, and he could have been trapped there, the worst case. The same thing happens with ice. So if you are unlucky enough, there could be currents under the ice also pulling the paddler that has ended up in the water under the ice so you need to be really careful around ice sometimes you might even see me and friends having fun with ice you know kayaking through ice or even getting up onto ice sheets and such and such but then it's always after an assessment of what we know about our kayaks and our skills and the local conditions and our assessment of the ice that it's safe enough to do that there are other people around us we know what we are capable of and our kayaks are capable of etc etc if you are out there paddling and you don't really have the frame of reference for what is safe and what isn't then i would say stay away from ice in virtually most circumstances because there's a lot more to it and uh, if you have a more vulnerable kayak of some sort it might be an inflatable kayak or it might be a, a hard shell kayak even that's a little bit more susceptible to damage your kayak could actually take damage uh, with an inflatable kayak ice could cause a leak in your air tubes and that could obviously be a dangerous situation. So take ice seriously as a risk. And it also might be that the ice that wasn't really at your starting spot when you began paddling has been floating around during your paddle due to wind or waves. And by the time you get back, there might actually be ice blocking your, you know, the location where you were hoping to land. So uh, something to take into consideration as well, making sure you have a plan B. And when it comes to one key issue when paddling in cold conditions, that would be to paddle with others, to not paddle alone. You're always safer if you're in a group, preferably three or more, so that if something happens to one or two of you, you have a third person to help. At least being two people is better than being one person. However, it, it also depends on that you and your co-paddler or co-paddlers are well trained when it comes to rescuing another paddler for, to assist the re-entry from the water to get back into the kayak and to get back into the kayak yourself if you have to. So be sure to know what your co-paddlers capacities are and uh, inform them of yours as well. Having practiced getting back into your kayak is really, really important and something that many people actually overlook. 
especially perhaps beginning paddlers or paddlers that have a stable kayak that might never actually have capsized and don't expect to. But when you're out there in winter and all of a sudden you find yourself hitting that sheet of ice or whatever it is and you tip over and you find yourself in absolutely ice cold water and realize this is a really dangerous situation then hopefully you have that dry suit on because you were smart. So you're properly dressed, you have a dry suit and you have a proper set of clothes underneath that makes, makes it, you know, not that cold and at least initially in the water. That means you have time now for a rescue to get back into your kayak. But you might still have all the normal factors. You might have wind and waves complicating getting back into your kayak and you might have ice around, making it even more difficult. So again, having the proper gear is critical. Having those ice picks to get up, but more importantly also, if you were to really get into trouble, making sure that you have a way to call for help. A phone in a waterproof pouch, in more remote locations, maybe a marine VHF radio, uh, a PLB, a personal locator beacon or something similar that can actually help you call for help if you were to end up in an emergency. So uh, everything is, everything basically makes you more vulnerable in cold water conditions and definitely in winter. And uh, that's something to take into account and to be prepared for. Then even when on land, actually, things are not as easy as one might think. You know, just getting to the water might be really complicated with your kayak. Because of ice blocking the way, you might have to carry it for some stretches. And of course, with ice around and snow and such, there's a higher risk of actually slipping and falling. It's actually one of the really common causes of injuries. People actually falling on land, slipping and falling on rocks, on rocks with ice on them, even worse. And that's something that also needs to be taken into account. You might consider actually wearing a helmet for protection, depending on where you are and how you're paddling. And uh, you might also consider wearing a neoprene hood uh, to make the impact of falling into the water less dramatic, so to speak. You're more protected. There are many ways to protect yourself, but the important thing is that you think through how you are paddling, in what conditions you will be going out. Make sure to check that weather report because the weather obviously is a huge hazard in winter. Imagine if you're suddenly out there and you get blown away from land by a snowstorm and uh, conditions are really difficult, really tough. So visibility is lower because of the snow and you might have fog and snow in a combination, worst case. You might have wind really pushing you away from land. And if you actually have had the bad fortune of capsizing and you're now also being pushed away from land in windy conditions, you know, that's just a bad day. So uh, make sure that you're aware of the weather conditions and the conditions you're going out in and you adapt your paddling plan, your paddle plan, your route, uh, depending on your own skills your own experience, the gear you have, the kayak you have, and the location where you're intending to paddle. So check for risks and check for whether there's current, where, whether there are tides, other things that might affect your paddle. And uh, adjust to make sure that the risk level is reasonable. So if you're again a new paddler and you haven't done this before and you don't really know how how to approach these risks to make those assessments that is completely fine that's completely normal i mean that was the case for me when i started out it's the case for everybody but then basically the best thing you can probably do is to go out with others to go out with people who do have this experience and can make those judgment calls and can help guide you and teach you how to paddle in these locations in uh all cases, make sure to research. And again, a Facebook group like 
cold water kayaking for cold water conditions or winter kayaking specifically for winter kayaking conditions. Those are arenas where you can ask questions and people will be happy to help. Or you can go and search in old discussion threads and find a lot of information about different topics where people have probably had the same thoughts and uh, worries that you have and also come up with solutions. The thing is that when you paddle a lot, the more you paddle, the more unusual things you come across, the more things that you wouldn't expect will happen. And with that, you build experience. But not everybody paddles 50 times a year or 100 times a year. And as such, many people will never experience these more unusual things that could happen. Like I described with the ice or falling, you know, in the archipelago somewhere and really sustaining a severe injury due to hitting their head or parts of the body on a rock, so to speak. And then being subject to hypothermia as things get colder and colder. So in those cases, it's really better to learn from others, which there are great resources for online, like these groups, by Googling, by checking YouTube videos or, or wherever you find your information. Uh, I would recommend to check coldwatersafety.org coldwatersafety.org which is a great information resource with a lot of it good advice and also examples of things that have happened well situations where things have gone wrong one way or another even the worst cases where there have actually been paddlers that didn't make it due to a difficult circumstance and the thing is trying to get information out like this uh, to warn about actual dangers that people might not think about then that is part of what we can contribute to as well as paddlers. Those of us who have a bit more experience paddling in cold water conditions and such, we can share that experience with others. So if you see somebody going out on the water and they're not properly dressed, they might not even be wearing a PFD, worst case, a personal flotation device, a life jacket or similar. Uh, you know, let them know that what they're doing might not be such a good idea. Because a lot of people actually go out in really dangerous conditions and they don't really realize the danger they're putting themselves into. I uh, recently published a video of not even winter conditions, but spring conditions, a warm spring day, but with winter almost temperature waters probably. Uh, or at least very cold waters where my cousin in Finland m and her fellow kayak instructors much, uh, might actually have saved the life of a paddler who was completely unprepared for the uh, cold water conditions he was in, not realizing the danger at all and ending up with a capsize and being unable to get back into the kayak. It does happen. And even if you're close to land and whatever you th many people say, well, you know, I'm paddling close to land and whatnot. But if you're paddling close to land and you realize after a while that it's not actually that easy to get up on land where you capsized because of whatever obstacles. Or when you do get up on land, you didn't have proper reinforcement clothes in dry bags, etc., etc., so that you could warm up after being really, really cold after immersing yourself into that cold water and perhaps not having a dry suit on. That is still a dangerous situation. So being prepared, having the proper gear and having the proper experience build up and making proper judgment calls, that really makes a difference. And we can help each other together. It's not like I know everything there is about winter kayaking, certainly not. I am always learning myself and I am confident enough to go out in some conditions and making judgment calls and some people might notice that even I go out every once in a while solo kayaking I mean kayaking myself but those are also in measured cases where I have made a safety assessment based on the conditions I'm paddling in the locations I'm paddling in I would be really cautious before going into some more remote areas and doing that by myself. Uh, I adapt to the skills I have and the limits I know I have 
and the gear I have and the uh, the conditions that I encounter. So it's a very big difference of going out in strong winds and uh, you know being subjected to potentially a really dangerous situation due to the weather with low visibility, meaning also low visibility for rescuers, etc. in a worst case scenario. Or being out pedaling inside a, a city in winter in daylight on a you know on a clear day with not a lot of waves those are two different scenarios and this is also something to take into account the visibility again with the snow and uh, perhaps cloudy and low visibility conditions things are going to be more difficult both for you and for others to see you and um, if you're actually in uh, the northern part okay. of the world then probably you might not have that many hours of daylight so you might end up paddling in the dark which is then immediately more dangerous when it comes to ice floating around in the water and whatnot so uh, having proper lighting along like a headlight and directional lights so you are visible to other vessels and many things like this which also is available by the way with some advice in, in a video like this that I'm gonna link to here these are things that you know, they are much easier to handle these situations if you have thought them through and you have the proper gear with you. And it adds up to actually to being a lot of gear. I mean, you need to be prepared for so much more in winter. It's also that batteries don't work very well, anything electronic. So that includes your mobile phone uh, that might run out of battery if you're counting on that to make an emergency call or even just to check weather conditions, then, uh, you know, making sure that you have a spare battery, so to speak, in the, in the sense of having a power bank, perhaps along a mobile charger cable, and uh, also having, also having preferably, I would say, more than one headlight option. So a, a headlamp. I've had the situation where two headlamps actually ran out of battery or stopped working in the cold on the same paddle. And the third one that I just happened to have with me ended up as my backup. And by then it was pitch black. So uh, be really careful. Even if you plan for your paddle trip to take place in daylight, it might not be that it is actually a daylight conditions when you end your trip. You might get delayed, you might get stranded somewhere. And if you're out there remotely, even if you're not planning for an overnight paddle, you might get stranded due to weather or an accident or whatever on an island somewhere, perhaps. And then you also need to have some sort of plan for how would you stay warm and shelter on that island or whatever it is if you have to stay overnight. So in my case, I use a kind of an emergency tent that I carry with me. And obviously I always have those spare clothes in dry bags and such and such. So everything, you know, being calculated for a bit of redundancy because things go wrong and things work less in cold conditions. That's something to take into account. So, well, basically, while there are a lot of things that could go wrong and, uh, things that one needs to prepare for then again if you do do everything right if you actually do everything right and uh, you have the proper gear and you adapt your paddle trip to your experience and uh, you make responsible choices then winter kayaking even in full winter conditions with snow and wind and waves and whatever if you are properly experienced for that, it can be a beautiful experience and an amazing experience. But any paddle trip should be adapted to your skills, your gear, your kayak, and the abilities of you and your co-paddlers. So be safe and be responsible out there. And it can make for some great experiences and, and beyond just preventing emergencies, it can actually keep you out just out of some really uncomfortable situations. So the more gear and preparedness and whatever you have, the better it actually works. One more thing I'd like to mention, which is really important and a good habit anyway, 
in all conditions is that you make sure that somebody else on land is aware of your paddle plan. So when you're starting, from where you're starting, and when you're expected to be back and at which location. So that way, if you really don't check in after, if you are, if you end up in trouble, and maybe stranded somewhere, and you haven't gotten back when you were supposed to, after a while, they can start trying to get hold of you and if necessary, call for help. Uh, letting the authorities know that there are some paddlers that were supposed to be back, but they aren't. So that can really make a difference. Let other people know your paddle plan. So check in with a safety contact. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe in order to help others find information on this channel and stay updated on upcoming videos. Stay safe out there and happy paddles.